Hello everyone, today we are going to take a look at uh, paperwork. Paperwork is a really important part of what the lighting designer does to make sure that uh, the vision they have in their head for how the play or musical or event or whatever it is uh, will get lit um, actually gets executed. Uh, the lights hung, the, the, you know, the, the shop order created, the, you know, the, the lights sent to the venue and hung in the right places so that they can uh, focus and, uh, and uh, write the light cues, which is the, the creative part uh, of it. So let's, uh, let's talk about uh, paperwork today. Um, all right. Uh, so in, in the quest for accuracy and efficiency, uh, the lighting designer often prepares uh, documents other than the light plot. So the light plot is sort of the key, uh, the linchpin, if you will, uh, for uh, um, getting a, a design executed. Um, they send other documentation, uh, sometimes for the electrician, sometimes for other places, uh, in order to make sure uh, that they get the, the, light, uh, the, the lighting design um, ready to go. Lighting paperwork can include things like uh, cue lists, uh, color schedules, color cut sheets, uh, magic sheets, uh, focus charts sometimes, shop orders. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, kinds of uh, paperwork that the uh, lighting designer has to prepare uh, in order to, uh, you know, to get, the, get the show put, put up. The light plot is always accompanied uh, by a hookup chart and an instrument schedule, so we'll, uh, we'll take a look at those uh, today, too. We're going to do a case study today uh, looking at the uh, Broadway production of Come From Away, which was uh, uh, nominated for a Tony Award um, for the lighting design, won the, the Tony for Best uh, Musical that year, uh, lighting designed by uh, Hal Binkley, uh, assistant lighting designed by Jacqueline Cox, who is one of our uh, former students at the University of Arkansas. She, as an MFA, graduated in 2016. So here's uh, the lighting design is, was truly remarkable. Uh, the, this, the set really never changed, as uh, what you see there is uh, some tables and chairs, uh, and uh, more or less that's it. And they shifted all that around in order to uh, create all of the different scenes in the play. So that um, creates a situation where the lighting design really has to carry us uh, through a play. Uh, this uh, this happens a lot, you know, as they uh, want to tell the story in a simple way. The lighting design becomes really crucial in helping uh, drive the story forward. So uh, this is uh, uh, the, sort of the paperwork that was uh, required in order to, to make uh, make all this work. So uh, first thing we want to look at is the hookup. Uh, that is a lighting chart or a schedule that is arranged by dimmer number or by channel number. There's a dimmer hookup and there's a channel hookup. Those are two different uh, pieces of paperwork. Uh, and it includes a variety of other uh, information specific to uh, the, the, the type of lighting fixture. And so let's take a look at a couple of them. Uh, it's arranged by channel or dimmer and it contains dimmer uh, number, channel number, the position uh, name, you know, where that fixture is hung in the house, the instrument number. So in case they have to do work notes, they uh, ref refer to that instrument number to go, okay, on, you know, the, the house right boom, it's instrument number five. That's what we need to work on or whatever. Uh, color, wattage, instrument type, focus, uh, or purpose. So here uh, are uh, a couple of pages, a couple of examples of the channel hookup sheet uh, from uh, Come From Away. You see, uh, uh, if you look at the, uh, the far uh, left side, uh, it uh, is listed by channel number first. So a channel hookup lists the channel number first. And so uh, uh, it, it lists them all in uh, numerical order, whatever that order is that the lighting designer has, uh, has chosen. And then it lists the position. So you see uh, here, uh, one through 10, at least we see on that first page, are FOH truss low. Uh, we see the unit numbers. Um, channel number one is for unit numbers three and eight. Uh, so those are two fixtures that are uh, twofered together. We call it twofer. That's when we uh, uh, plug two fixtures into one uh, dimmer. And uh, you see what the purpose is. It's a front light downstage. The color uh, is R132 and there is no gobo and then it shows the dimmer and the address. Um, and very often dimmer and address is the same thing when you uh, we were talking about uh, multi-parameter lighting fixtures like LEDs or moving lights. Uh, that's not always the case. We uh, sometimes list it just by uh, the address. Uh, 
because we can choose that number. Then you see on that second page, uh, there's uh, you know channel 71 through 86 lists a different lighting position where those fixtures are. I wanted to show this to you as well because that uh, those uh, channels like channel 71 for example includes uh, a gobo uh, in addition to the color. So here's here's a little bit of a, a blow up of what we were looking at there. So channel position unit number the type accessory. Uh, and the wattage uh, or the load that that lighting fixture is going to uh, require. Uh, purpose, in other words, where, uh, what is that light supposed to do? Not where it hangs, but what is it supposed to do on the stage? Color and gobo and then uh, address. So the other really important piece of paperwork uh, that we uh, always include is called the instrument schedule. And the instrument schedule lists all of the instruments or lighting fixtures by their position in the theater and it gives all the information that the plot doesn't have room for so on your light plot you really only list a couple of different things just so we don't crowd uh, the light plot with too much uh, information so we know we include color typically color um, uh, unit number channel number but we generally don't list a lot of other things which the instrument schedule can can do for us including the position the instrument type the wattage, the color number, the focus area, circuit numbers if, if we need to, dimmer or channel number, any kind of remarks or notes that the uh, designer might want to make about that particular fixture. Here's a couple of examples of an instrument schedule and you see on the, uh, the uh, left uh, side uh, of our screen that is the stage left far box boom lighting position and you see it's listed by unit number then the channel, then um, the purpose or what kind of instrument it is if it's a moving light, um, instrument type and accessory, color and gobo if it has such a thing, uh, and uh, address. You see uh, address is 713. That's the address that's you know uh, been decided uh, in, in on the fixture and then the dimmer, dimmer is M7 which suggests to me that uh, there's a, uh, an umbilical, uh, which is sort of a cable that has lots of, uh, uh, lots of cables kind of uh, attached together or rolled together. And that's just running power to that particular fixture because we don't need a dimmer to run uh, that, uh, uh, you know, a, a moving light like a, like a Mac Viper. Uh, but it does have to get power so that it can, uh, it can turn on and do its job. So you also see we're listing uh, uh, other, uh, other fixtures and what they do. Uh, so essentially uh, what we're using and what you're seeing that generates this, uh, the, the, the kinds of paperwork, several of the kinds of paperwork we're talking about, it's a, it's a software program called uh, Lightrite, which uh, a, a, a great number of um, uh, lighting designers use. It's kind of the industry standard uh, today. Uh, Lightrite um, works sort of like a database and you just type in the, the numbers and the units and the channels and the purposes and all that and then Lightrite uh, has a way to uh, take that information and generate different reports or different schedules uh, so that on an instrument schedule we want to look at that information a little differently than we want to look at essentially the same information on a hookup or a color schedule or something like that. So we're just taking a look through, uh, you know, these different kinds of paperwork. Uh, you see this page right here uh, is page 32 of 41. That means lots of lighting fixtures in, in, uh, uh, in this, uh, this report. Um, these are the tree up lights uh, in the show. Uh, and you see the unit numbers are listed in the channel uh, and then the dimmer uh, and what kind of lighting fixture it is. These are birdies, which is a uh, birdie is a very small uh, par fixture. So if a PAR 64 is 8 inches around and it's uh, about a thousand watt lighting fixture, a birdie uh, is uh, a PAR 16, uh, which means it's much, much smaller uh, and generally they range in wattage uh, around 50 watts uh, up to maybe, you know, maybe 75 or 100 watts. So they're made to uh, work closer uh, to uh, uh, actors or you can put them in places that uh, because they're so small in places that larger line fixtures can't go okay it's, there's some other paperwork types uh, that uh, we uh, we want to look at things like color cut lists 
the magic sheet, which we've kind of uh, spoken about, a, a lighting score. Um, it could be that um, you know a lighting designer looks uh, gets a copy of the score and they make notations in it where their lighting cues uh, will go. This is information they share with the stage manager. Um, uh, a batten tape uh, is. It's a piece of paperwork that I'm not going to show you, uh, uh, you know, in the rest of this uh, slideshow. But a batten tape lists um, a particular lighting position and all of the uh, lighting fixtures on that particular uh, lighting position um, that uh, it, it assists in focus. Sometimes we take that batten tape and we, you know, tape it to um, the lighting position: first electric, second electric, whatever. And uh, that shows um, the uh, electricians exactly where to hang those lighting fixtures. Uh, a focus chart. Um, this is a paperwork that uh, is kind of worked on by assistant lighting designers. It's documentation of how each lighting fixture is focused uh, in the space. Where are the shutter cuts? Where is it positioned on the stage? How high? How low? Where's the hot spot uh, of the light? And this is uh, good documentation, uh, particularly for shows that have long runs, uh, open-ended shows like a Broadway show. Uh, you may need to come back in in six months or three months or, or whatever and uh, touch up uh, the, the focus. If you know lights drift out of focus uh, slightly as you know they heat up and, and contract, you know metal sort of expands and contracts. If uh, those lights aren't tightened down right, sometimes they kind of drift out of focus, we can refer back to the focus chart and see exactly where that light is supposed to be uh, supposed to be pointed. Uh, in the absence of the lighting designer who's not there, you know, to tell you, uh, you know, where to, where to put it. And a shop order is another uh, important part of the paperwork in, uh, uh, in a lighting design. So this is a color cut list or sometimes called the color schedule. It lists the color. Uh, so you see in this uh, instance it's Lee 161 plus probably means it also has R119, which is a piece of diffusion gel, so that they, uh, they can focus the lighting, uh, lighting fixture sharp, which means uh, you know, where the barrel uh, is uh, sh uh, sharp focus, which means it has a hard edge of light. Um, that's how you get the most amount of light out of a lighting fixture. And then they drop, we drop a piece of frost, uh, as it's known, or diffusion, in the lighting fixture and then it softens that outside edge so we get the most amount of light but we still get a nice soft edge so that those lights blend with other lighting fixtures across the stage so this is Lee 161 and you can see uh, this color Lee 161 is in unit number eight on the stage left far uh, stage left far box boom uh, it's in ex instrument number four five and thirteen on the balcony rail uh, and it lists also lists the channel number so this is how uh, electricians in the uh, theater know how to get the color ready uh, for when they focus the lighting fixtures they have all the colors and they know uh, which lighting fixtures to drop up drop them into the magic sheet is uh, that very personal uh, piece of paperwork that we have uh, spoken about uh, before. Uh, it lists uh, all the lighting fixtures in a particular system of lights. And a system of lights would include, if you're looking at the, uh, the magic sheet here for the 25th annual uh, Putnam County Spelling Bee for Broadway, um, it lists the fronts, the box booms, uh, SDS, I don't know what SDS, uh, SDS warm coming from the right side of the stage, SDS warm coming from the left side of the stage, and then they sort of go on uh, like that. Uh, you can see the little uh, numbers out in the kind of the gray bubble out to the side of the, uh, uh, that second set of boxes. Those are likely the group number. Uh, of all those fixtures. So this lighting designer knows if I want to bring on 41 through 45, I can just call for group 43. Uh, or if they want to bring on all of those lighting fixtures, uh, both sides, that's group 22. And so that just aids in the cue writing process and making it go a little bit faster. All the front lights you can see are group 100. And this particular designer, this is the kind of paperwork uh, you know they like to have with them at the uh, uh, at the tech table and it helps them uh, figure out you know where is the light that I want to use at this particular time and uh, let's take a look at uh, some paperwork from come from away this uh, these are uh, 
two pages uh, of magic sheets um, for, uh, actually it's the same one twice. It looks like it's the same. <laughs> I put the same page twice. Uh, did yeah, didn't mean to do that. It's it's actually this is two two pages. But you can see that uh, it's far more colorful. Uh, and this uh, Hal Binkley, uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, magic sheet that uh, he likes to work with. And it lists uh, all of the different systems. So if you look up at the top, I think I have a blow up. I have a blow up of one. So actually, here's the second page, uh, uh, which I didn't show you. So uh, if you look up at the top right next to the Come From Away logo, R23 High Sides, which R23 is sort of a, uh, it's an amber uh, color. It's coming from both directions, because I can see in the title, he's got arrows uh, coming in from both sides. High side lighting fixtures, so 455 and 155 and 151 and 451, those are all the numbers uh, of those lighting fixtures and approximately, see there's a little uh, uh, image of the, uh, of the ground plan in uh, the magic sheet. That uh, kind of lets the lighting designer know where those lighting fixtures, um, you know, where they land. So if I, uh, if I want to light at center stage um, and it's, uh, you know, my high side amber, uh, I can look for, you know, channels number 150, six or 152 or 153 or 157 uh, and then the the lavender uh, high side is uh, you know next to it chair special you see right below the come from away so all of the special lights that get hung uh, whenever a person whenever Kevin one is sitting in his chair the lighting designer knows oh channel 353 that's my special for that uh, for that particular uh, chair so every lighting system is uh, is uh, sort of laid out on the magic sheet and it just provides quick reference uh, uh, and in a show that has lots of lighting fixtures uh, that can become an important time saver uh, sometimes the uh, moving light layout is also um, uh, a, sort of it's kind of like a magic sheet uh, in, a, in a lighting design so you see in the moving light layout you see where uh, this lighting designer has uh, all of their um, uh, moving light uh, channels 601 through 633 it looks like over the stage uh, 641 642 and 643 uh, in a front of house truss um, the um, the wall LED uh, wash lights uh, looks like are uh, are up there it looks like there's also a, a quick reference to what kind of uh, gobo patterns are loaded into uh, each of those uh, uh, moving light fixtures. So this is these are quick references and part of the paperwork the lighting designer uh, does. Uh, a cue list is also uh, some of the paperwork that lighting designers prepare. So this is uh, you know it's sort of like an Excel uh, an Excel spreadsheet and likely this. Uh, uh, this cue sheet was prepared in, in Excel, but it lists the cue, it lists the time, uh, how long it takes that cue to uh, execute, um, the description, what is the cue. Placement is where does the cue go? When, uh, when does the stage manager call that cue? Um, the page number that it might appear on, and uh, this is for the Kane Mutiny um, uh, on Broadway. Uh, it looks like 2006, so quite some time ago, but looks like the interrogator. Uh, over there is uh, there's a special uh, uh, notes uh, section for that. Uh, here is a, a cue list for Come From Away for Broadway. Um, and again, it lists the same information, lighting cue, the page number, uh, whether or not there's a block, the time is the T. Uh, w, I, would, I don't know exactly because I, you know, this is kind of particular to the lighting designer. Uh, that might be uh, width and that might um, indicate that it's a uh, cue supposed to be taken in conjunction with another cue. Uh, and F might be follow. There's a way in the lighting console to link cues together so that one cue follows another cue immediately without having to be called again. Um, and you see where it's taken on uh, is, you know, when does that cue get called and description is what happens in that lighting cue. And this is often uh, information that is given to the stage manager so they know uh, how to prepare their uh, uh, script, uh, their book, to, in order to call the show, their calling script. Uh, spot cues look a little bit different. This is a, a, a spot cue list that lists the three different uh, follow spots uh, in a particular show. This is uh, also for um, 
This is, I think, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which was on Broadway. And you see Qs over there with Q4, with Q6, with Q7, with Q11. Uh, it lists the frame, the size, how big uh, the spot should be. You know, you see waist high, knee high um, it is listed in there. The color scroll. Uh, you know, which color uh, do you want it to scroll on? We likely would use an LED fixture today to change the color. Uh, the target is, uh, you know, who, who do we want to hit uh, with, uh, with that follow spot? And Ross and Erica and Leah, it looks like, uh, or Lee, those are, the, uh, those are the three follow spot operators for this show. And here's the uh, follow spot cue sheet for uh, uh, Come From Away. You see it's got very similar information, uh, like Q46, is uh, when these uh, spot cues should be executed. Uh, Beulah comes out up left with Oz. She says police department. That's when her light comes on, her follow spot comes on for spot number three. And her spot goes back out uh, when she says elementary school. So these are informa information that typically an assistant lighting designer prepares to give to the follow spot operators so they know how to execute their cues. Very often for Broadway shows, as a matter of fact, for all Broadway shows, the stage managers not call follow spot cues. The follow spot operators execute them on their own. And so this is good information to give to them so they can practice and know uh, when, uh, when their cues happen. Uh, another piece of paperwork that gets prepared is the moving light uh, template uh, load uh, for a Broadway show. Um, well, and, you know, any moving light, you can, most of them you can change the templates. You can change the gobos that, uh, that are inside. You know, they all come with stock gobos, and some of those gobos are, are good, and some of them are really terrible, or, or are just not um, useful for your particular, uh, you know, production. And so you can change out those uh, gobos. And so this is the lighting designer is saying, in all of the lighting fixtures we're renting, we want to make sure these gobos are in these positions uh, so that uh, when we go to, uh, you know, to program the lights for the show, I know how to find the templates that I want. This is actually for Hairspray, uh, the Broadway production of Hairspray. Here's Come From Away. This is uh, uh, the, the, the gobo wheel load. And you see, because it's Hal Binkley, uh, gobo number two right there is, uh, is uh, internal reflections. Been, it been renamed uh, Binkley Reflections. And another one of my favorite gobos, another one of um, Hal Binkley's favorite gobos, number five, that is uh, GAM Construction D which is just an awesome uh, geometric uh, gobo, which you know, provides good breakup uh, of light on the stage. Uh, and I think lastly, we're gonna talk about a shop order for a Broadway show or a professional production show uh, that um, you know, is, is moving into a Broadway house or you know, professional you know, touring or, or whatever. If the house does not own its own lighting equipment, which no Broadway house has its own lighting equipment, every show, uh, rents all that lighting. Uh, so if a show like The Phantom of the Opera that's been running for 33 years, they've been renting those lights for 33 years. So uh, that's a good contract to have if you are, uh, you know, PRG or Four Wall or whatever company is renting the lights to Phantom of the Opera. Um, that's been a good gig to uh, a good gig to have. So this is the shop order from Come From Away, and this is the lighting paperwork that's prepared that tells uh, the shop um, uh, what lights and what equipment is required for the production of Come From Away. So here's uh, here's a first page, uh, and then here's a second page. You see on that first page, control. Uh, is what it starts with because they rent the lighting consoles as well. So they uh, they need uh, uh, two Ion 3000 uh, lighting consoles. They need six Net3 four-port DMX gateways with mounting hardware. They need uh, two ETC Net3 show control gateways, two 24-inch monitors, two 19-inch monitors. So all of that stuff uh, uh, is uh, necessary. And I would suggest what it doesn't say on this is whether one of those consoles is going to come back. Uh, it could be that they rent uh, two consoles all the time. Sometimes they'll rent um, uh, kind of a high-powered console like, a, like an EOS or a Geo or something like that. And then the console that stays with the show is an Ion or something that's not as heavy fire-powered. Um, the console, a console like the EOS isn't required to run a show if all you're doing is pressing go, um, but it's valuable in the programming process. You know, uh, it just makes it easier to program the moving lights and, and whatever. So then you, you see all the moving, uh, the automated equipment there. Um, 
There are 23 Martin Mac Viper performance fixtures, and you see in red out there, plus three. Um, this is either a shop order change where they're adding three more fixtures, or uh, that might be the spares because uh, every show orders some spare lighting fixtures just to hang out backstage in case something goes down. Um, there's not time typically, you know, between uh, light check and the show running that night. They just have to grab a new light, hang it up, um, you know, give it the same address so it performs all the same functions as the light that was already there. Then they take that other light and, and fix it or whatever. And you can see there's uh, 98 ETC source 4, 36 degrees, 59, 14 degrees, uh, 64, far, par 64, VNSP, very narrow spot fixtures at 1,000 watts. Um, then on that next page, you can see the truss and pipe uh, that they need. Everything they need to put that show together is included in the shop order. Here's a kind of a, a blow up of that automated equipment uh, right there. Um, so it looks like on this shop order, they got rid of all the ETC Source 4 revolutions. Uh, so minus five. Looks like they had uh, five in the show. Now they have zero. So that's what that minus five is. So 23 Martin Mac Viper performance, uh, they likely had 20 on the original shop order. This is an adjustment to that, so they added three. Uh, 25 Chroma Q Color 472s, um, which, uh, uh, which is a lighting fixture that we, uh, we own and we like a lot. And then this lists the rest of the uh, conventional equipment, you know, uh, as part of the show. So um, there's lots of other paperwork that, uh, you know, the uh, lighting designer uh, uh, prepares uh, for a show. But um, th these are sort of the, the major uh, uh, pieces of paperwork. And uh, I hope this has given you a little bit of a, of a sense of, uh, of why it's necessary to um, kind of be an accountant uh, in addition to being a lighting designer. And I kind of wanted to end with this. The best lighting designers must be creative. So you have to be an artist while you're painting the stage with light, but you also have to be methodical because uh, lighting design is also kind of a numbers game. Uh, you have to make sure that all of, the, uh, all of the spreadsheets and all of the schedules and all of the reports are prepared correctly so that when you move into the theater to, uh, to do your job, uh, everything is there and ready to go for you. All right. Thanks, everyone.